Five days after his birthday. <sighs> I woke up at 1.38 a.m. to his girlfriend screaming on my phone, Miss Tucker, they're shooting Isaiah and he doesn't, they're shooting at him and he doesn't even have a weapon. He's in my car, Miss Tucker. Miss Tucker, I don't know. I think he's gonna die, Miss Tucker. He doesn't, screaming to the officer Ottenberg, he doesn't have a weapon. Why are you shooting at him? So I get up. Get in my car after I tell my son that's laying in the other room, come on, you're shooting at your brother, we gotta go, we gotta get up. We gotta go see what's going on. So we arrive at the crime scene and they say he's not here. And all the officers are gone by the time we get there and he's driven the car away from the house and down the street he crashed the car and he ran to a shed. And in the shed, he hit. And it was officers that ran to the shed. Later, I saw on the video cams that they ran to the shed, guns pointed, telling him to come out. The officer that shot him said, Isaiah, if you don't get out the car, I'm gonna shoot you. I mean it, Isaiah, I'm gonna shoot you. And he began to shoot at the car. But unbeknownst to him, Isaiah's four-year-old son was on that side of the building and he drove away from the house because he knew his son was laying in the bed sleeping. And when I got there, everything was gone, but yet and still, I went down to the hospital. I said, is Isaiah here? They were like, who? I said, his girlfriend told me he had been shot and he, he's here. And he wasn't there at that hospital, so I went over to Mercy Medical and I said, Can, is my son here? They told me that he has been shot. He, is he here? It took them five and a half hours to come talk to me and tell me maybe it's your son. Maybe it's not your son. And then after the sixth hour, the officer that was, the commanding officer came out and said, yeah, it's your son. I was like, maybe it's not my son. Maybe it's not because they, they weren't um, sure and they know I, who Isaiah is because he was the star basketball player. He was the star track player when he was in high school. He, he did all these things in the newspaper in, in Oshkosh and they're like, well, maybe it isn't. And then the officer said, yes, it's your son. I said, well, I have to see him because he just had tattoos and I knew his tattoos. I went into the hospital room they wouldn't let me get close to him after six hours. His chest was open and I could still see it. I crumbled to the floor and couldn't breathe. Because that was my son laying there. That was my baby that I had, that I carried, that I nurtured. Laying there. So, the police department, they proceeded to tell me after I came to that this is what they were gonna do. They kept his body for two weeks. And then they said, no, we gotta keep it for a little bit more because it's a crime scene in and of itself. So they transported his body out of Oshkosh to Madison. I had to pay to get his body back to Oshkosh. I had to pay out of pocket for the funeral. And when they had the trial, the officer, they didn't even notify my family, even after we had been in negotiations with the police department of Oshkosh, talked to the chief, talked to everyone, and no one notified us at all that this trial was going on for Mr. Oxberg. And then they told me someone represented my family, and nobody in my family knew. And they didn't even know who the representative was because she wasn't related to us. So after all of this, they tell me, Miss Tucker, we're gonna give you this videotape of your son. This is what we're gonna do for you. And they gave me his autopsy and they gave me the video cam of his last breath, where he died in the ambulance and how they treated him before he died. They got him out the shed. They stripped him bug naked. They turned him over five to ten times and said, we don't see no exit wound. We don't see no wound. My son said, am I going to die? I'm going to die. I watched that myself. I saw my son's last breath. <laughs> I know that there has
has to be justice some way, somehow. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, green, yellow. It doesn't matter. These are our children, our brothers, our sisters, some mothers. We can't replace them. Everybody is needed. And our children may make mistakes, but they're still ours. And we love them. And it doesn't mean that they can't get better. It just means that we as a society have to push for greatness. Yes. Yeah.